Good morning. Um, Joe Berg, how, how are we doing? Um, I just want to pick up. Last week, we uh, read Romans 8, uh, 1 through 11. I want to read the rest of Romans today. Uh, I want to pick up in verse 11 because, again, you know, it's one of my favorite verses. So um, being a great verse in the Bible, um, it, I feel we can launch into the rest of eight, but eight is so powerful. Romans eight is so powerful and so filled with God that that um, you could share that with anybody and give them a good day. And we'll talk about that as we're going. Um, remember, verse one was, there is now no condemnation through Christ Jesus. And that's where we're picking up. I'm in verse 11, though. And it says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you you. He dwells in us. And and we just have to run with that, that the Holy Spirit is here for you. He can be with you. He can be upon you. And he can be in you. All you need is Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this word. I thank you for the Bible, how wonderful it is, how, how strong some of the verses are that can just minister to us at this point in time in 2021 and beyond, going into 2022 and so on. I just thank you, God. Just show us today something special for our own personal lives. Show us how we can help somebody other else. Show us how we can make a change in our life or, or grow in our life. I just thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, do your work within us. Since you dwell in us, do your work within us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So um, it, we get sonship through the Spirit, and, and that is one thing. When you're seeking Jesus, you're going to Get the Holy Spirit. It's a gift from God for you, for me, for us to walk the earth today. And so I'm picking up in Romans 8, verse 12, it says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So if we live for Christ, we're going to live. We're going to live forever. We, we know that, but we can have life within us right now. We can have God's life in us right this minute. Verse 14, Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. If we're led by the Spirit of God... We are called sons of God by God himself. We're his children. And receive that great, great, great word. We are sons of God if we're led by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit can lead us. Verse 15, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. He's our Father. He is our Father, our true Father in heaven. We do have biological Father, but that's not going to get you to heaven. Only through Jesus Christ do you receive Father God. Receive the Father. It is so important. Verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. You are a child of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. You're a joint heir with Christ of what God has given him. He's given you. I know it's hard to believe. I know it is. But we are joint heirs with Christ. The Bible says so. And then it goes on and says, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. You're going to be glorified. If your body doesn't feel like it's glorified right now, it's okay. You're going to get a new body in heaven. You know, I know some of us are going through some tough stuff and we can't keep our minds settled. You have to have the mind of Christ. Know that the spirit is, dwells in you and you are the son of God. Let me move on. 
Romans 8, verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be cared, to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed to us. It shall be revealed to us, the glory of God. Um, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. That is something special that we have to look forward to. When we get to heaven, we're brought into his glory. Verse 20, for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered we will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God, the glorious liberty, the glorious freedom being a child of God. Verse uh, 22, for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. We've been groaning and complaining. We groan and complain too much, actually. Um, but know that some of the groaning and complaining, God knew. Uh, it's like going through labor pains like a woman birthing a child. And, and that's exactly what it says. And then verse 23 goes on and says, not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit. We have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. We're like, oh, Lord, man, I, my legs hurt. My knee hurts. My inside, my head hurts. You know, many things. My heart hurts. Uh, you know, we have people with kidney pains and kidney problems. But here's the thing. When we're praying and we're groaning and we're just groaning. It says right here, the redemption of our body. You're going to be redeemed. He will redeem us. Verse 24, for we were saved in this hope, the hope of heaven, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? So if you see something, you don't have to hope for it. It's right there. You can either grab it or let it go. But here's the thing, heaven is waiting for us. That is our hope. We're going to be set free totally. One day you're going to be have full hope. And, and it goes on, verse 25, but if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. That's the tough part, is, is going through the stuff that we go through. But I love verse 26. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. Sometimes we feel so weak and we don't know what to do. The Spirit also helps in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession. When you don't know what to pray, pray in the Spirit. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. Yes, seek Jesus Christ, and Jesus will give you his Holy Spirit. He'll fill you with his Spirit. He'll indwell you. We read that in uh, Romans 8, 11. And here it is right here. Why? Because it says, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. There's going to be things coming out that you don't even understand. It's okay. God does. When you're praying in the Spirit, you're praying straight to God, straight to God. The devil can't hear anything. Nobody else might understand it, but God does. You and God, you're one together. You're praying directly to God, and God's speaking to you. And, and when he speaks big things, look at this. I'm now in uh, verse 27. It says, now he who searches the hearts... He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He is praying and he's making intercession for us according to the truth, according to his word, which is love, which is peace, which is joy, which is patience, which is kindness and goodness and faithfulness. This is what he's praying 
for you. He's interceding straight to God for you personally. These are such powerful, powerful, powerful verses on prayer and intercession. And it goes on, praying in the Spirit. And it goes on. Verse 28 is probably one of your favorite verses. It could be the second most used, well, maybe Psalm 23, but but you've got John 3, 16, Psalm 23, and Romans 8, 28. Everybody loves and knows Romans 8, 28. Here it is. And we know that all things, all things work together for good to those who love God. Do you love God? All things are going to work out. The Bible says so. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. It's his purpose. He's called you. All things will work out. It doesn't matter. All we have to do is love God, and they're going to work out. It says all things will work out to those who love God. It's going to be okay. Let's move on. Verse 29. For whom he foreknew, see, foreknew you. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus needs to be the firstborn in our life, and we need to just continue that. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called... These he also justified. He's justified you. He's called you. He's predestined you. And whom he justified, these he has glorified. He's also glorified you. I'm going to move on to verse 31. Romans 8, 31. That's powerful stuff, you know, but let's get into God's everlasting love too. Verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Isn't that a great scripture verse? Grab onto that one right after Romans 8.28, Romans 8.31. If God is for us, who can be against us? Stand on that every single day. If God is for us, who can be against us? Don't worry what people are saying. Don't worry about the enemy. Don't worry about the evil. Don't worry about America. Think about God. Verse 32, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God is going to take care of you. You have to trust. You have to obey. You have to look to the Father. You have to do it through Jesus Christ, and he'll send his Holy Spirit to pray with you, to be with you, to help you, to lead you, to guide you. It's all right here in Romans 8. This is so powerful. I'm picking up in verse 33. It goes on and says, Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It's Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Jesus is seated at the, seated at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. You have the Holy Spirit back in verse 26 and 27 praying for you. You have Father God who's called you, and you have Jesus Christ seated seated right at the right hand of God. It says, even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us. Jesus is praying for you to God. He's seated right next to him praying for us. Look at this. It goes on and says, verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or uh, peril or sword? As is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep going to slaughter. You know what? There's some things we got to go through, but we're just going through them. We ain't staying there. We're going through them. Verse 37, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us that sent his only son for you so you can have his Holy Spirit for you. It says, we are more than conquerors through him 
who loved us. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Verse 38, for I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is powerful stuff. You can live on that stuff. You could live on Romans 8. Just take it. I will see you Sunday.